This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, we now bring you Year in the City's exclusive interview with Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh on India's space journey and achievements. Interviewer is S. Rangabhasham, AIR correspondent. Dr. Jitendra Singh, a warm welcome to the program and uh, let me begin with the space sector. India actually made a very humble beginning way back in the 60s as far as space is concerned with the vision of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai and from there on we have come a long way and also most people would be recalling the photographs of those times when even a part of the rocket was transported on a cycle in the center. So from there on we have come a very long way. How do you see India's space journey so far in the last no, six indeed, decades? Indeed, it's an amazing journey. It's a success story which is unprecedented in the history of space technology. As you rightly mentioned, when India began its space program led by Vikram Sarabhai, that was a time when the USA and the then USSR were on the verge of sending a human being to the surface of moon. Mm-hmm. And indeed, that happened also in 1969. It was Neil Armstrong from USA who landed on the surface of moon. And we had just started our program a few years earlier to that. And by the time they were already making headway in the space achievements, we were still singing nursery rhymes like uh, Chanda Mama, Durke, etc. But it has been a quantum jump. And I think the most distinct illustration of this is that when Neil Armstrong landed on the surface of the moon, he had a small stall around which was filmed, I think, BBC telecasted also. And he made that famous observation or a famous dialogue. He said a small step Step for man, but a a giant step for mankind. But the other day I was telling some of the friends from the USA, some of the scientific fraternity friends, that Neil Armstrong went around, had a stall, but he didn't see the presence of water on the surface of the moon. It was our Chandrayaan few years later, which went and captured the pictures of the presence of water on the surface of moon, where H2O, which has some indication of the semblance of uh, human habitat existing over there or possibility of existing. So that was the kind of quantum leap that India made, even having started a little late. And over the last seven, eight years, particularly under Prime Minister Modi, it's been a very fast-track journey, particularly also because Prime Minister Modi did away with number of taboos of the past, took number of past breaking decisions like, for example, unlocking the space and making it open to the private participation, thereby increasing its spectrum of activity. And today I can say with all the confidence at my command that India, as far as space technology is concerned, is taking the lead. And many of the inputs, many of the inferences from our space missions, like, for example, the Mangalyan mission, yes. are being procured by NASA and the other premier institutes of the world. Dr. Singh, ISRO launched 177 foreign satellites belonging to some 19 countries, some of them so-called advanced countries through its commercial arm, and has contributed a lot to foreign exchange reserves. Can we expect the space commercial business to flourish in times to come? Yeah, it is. It has. Indeed, in the last 8-9 years, there has been a tremendous leap even in this area. We are launching missions and rockets not only from smaller countries, but some of the leading countries, including USA, France, UK. And they find it more compatible, more comfortable, particularly for their smaller vehicles and smaller rockets. And this has also emerged as a new avenue of income generation or revenue generation for India. I can put it this way that India's ascent to the top has already begun via the space. And after unlocking of the space sector for private participation, are there any plans to open up the nuclear energy sector as well? As we all know, huge potential. Actually, because space got little more attention, seen more attention from the media as well as the public because of the Gaganyan and some of the very fantastic, or I should say, missions which were little romanticized like the Mangalyan mission and the Gaganyan mission. And that's why reforms were brought in by Prime Minister Modi in the atomic energy sector did not receive the same kind of attention or notice as the reforms in the space sector. But the truth is that we have also opened up our atomic energy projects to joint ventures to begin with with the PSUs. Earlier on, the major constraints which was preventing us from expanding our nuclear program was the financial constraint. And you would appreciate that most of our nuclear installations were in the South Indian states, the Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh. Only recently, it's been only in this regime that we have traveled towards north and very shortly we having the first ever nuclear installation in North India in a place called Gorakhpur in Haryana, which is just about 150 kilometers away from the Union capital of New Delhi. And 
to encourage this, on the one hand, the Prime Minister made sure that we have enhanced budget for 10 years for increasing the reach of our nuclear installation, and at the same time also threw it open to joint ventures, so that another PSU, like for example, there's ONGC or there's another profit-making PSU, can partner with the NPCI, uh, the Nuclear Power Corporation Limited, or one of the PSUs in the atomic energy, and uh, one can do the knowledge sharing, the other can do the fund sharing, and that would supplement each other's resources. Dr. Singh, I want to put this question to you that earlier it was, you know, critics used to say that space is something which is capital intensive and should be usually the domain of rich countries, advanced countries who don't have problems of poverty and other basic fundamental problems. But India has probably, you know, proved the critics wrong by using space technology to alleviate poverty, isn't it, sir? No, right from the beginning, when Sarabhai began the space technology program, Homi Baba began the atomic energy program, we had proclaimed to the world that our, both the programs would be dedicated to peaceful purposes, to bring ease of living for the common citizen. When Homi Baba started the atomic energy program, Nagasaki Hiroshima had happened just about seven, eight years earlier. I don't think anybody would have believed him. They might have rather seen it skeptically as if he was trying to camouflage something. But today, under Prime Minister Modi, the vindication has come in the true sense because now we have shown and we have illustrated to the entire world how both these sectors can actually be effectively used to bring ease of living for a common city. And they can be used in every sector. Now, for example, space sector is used in railways, in smart cities, in roads and buildings, in disaster management, telemedicine, health medicine. So yeah. it's virtually entered every Indian household. So space technology is no longer limited to sending off the rockets. Its utility otherwise is much more. Similarly, the atomic energy is now being used as an alternative source of clean energy. It's being used to a great extent in the health sector for the management of several diseases, notably cancers, etc. Similarly, atomic energy being used in food sector for increasing the shelf life of the fruit and vegetable elements for fortification of food. So I think this government has shown the world how both these resources can be used not for what they appear to be used because those who saw us with skepticism and did not believe us did so because they thought space was only meant for sending rockets and the atomic energy department was only meant for developing an atom bomb. But we have actually vindicated ourselves. Dr. Singh, in 2016, a brainstorming session was held at Vigyan Bhavan wherein the Department of Space collaborated with other ministries in order to bring out their issues of solving different issues of various ministries and harnessing the power of space applications. How far this initiative has been taken? No, I think that was a beginning done very well at the behest of Prime Minister Modi. That was around 2016. Our space scientists and space experts are made to sit with each of the different ministries and departments to interact with them, to make them realize, to make them aware, to paint them of the various applications that were available with the space technology which could be used by them. For example, there were a series of railway accidents happening earlier. Possibly those, the policy plan in the railway also were not aware that through space technology you can determine the presence of a potential obstructing object on the 10, track. 12 kilometers ahead and the driver can use his brakes. So similarly, we have, uh, that is how in each sector now space technology is being used. And encouraged and from that experience, now, since I'm dealing with all the six, seven departments of science, we have started holding combined meetings. So each of the six, seven departments also interact separately with each of the other departments and the ministries. And all these seven departments also sit together to have a joint meeting at least once in a month so that we are able to provide our scientific applications for sectoral development, for infrastructure development, like, for example, CSIR as a heli-bound technology whereby you can determine the presence of groundwater on the surface of earth before digging a well. So gone are the days when you would spend so much money, so much manpower digging a well, and then you would not find water yeah. presence over there. Now you can determine it beforehand. So this exercise, which was initiated at Prime Minister's behest in 2016, is now being extended, and we are, in fact, trying to bring closer each of the scientific departments, each of the other sectoral departments. Dr. Singh, let's also talk about the recently held Abu Dhabi Space Dialogue, where only two countries, India and Israel, were invited, and you went there with a special message of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi for the UAE President, His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and the people of UAE. 
Isn't that a special gesture of UAE <coughs> towards India and it shows the prowess India commands under Prime Minister Modi? No, certainly so. As I said, the dream which Umi Baba saw for atomic energy or Sarabhai saw for space technology has actually met with this vindication under Prime Minister Modi. The entire world is now looking up to us for cues. And as you rightly mentioned, it is India's supremacy or excellence in these areas which have led to this situation where the other countries are ready to not only recognize us but give us an exclusive stature in the community of nations. And that's precisely what happened in Abu Dhabi. Other than India, it was only Israel. Was only two countries which were given an opportunity to participate in the opening session, which is, in other words, sometimes known as the inaugural session back home. There have also been reports in main media that satellites could be used for mobile technology and also providing internet services. Are you looking at those options as well? No, certainly. The new geospatial policy being brought in by the government inculcates all the three sectors. The space, which means space technology, the aerial, which means the drones, the terrestrial on the ground, which is the radar. So now this is a synergy of various technologies for a common purpose. And I think this synergy, this integration is going to increase each day. Because earlier on, there was more of a tendency to work in silos. Dr. Singh, we are already seeing U.S. talking about space tourism as such. Do you see a couple of years uh, down the line where ISRO could be facilitating uh, space tourism? I can't say that for sure because there are so many important rules to the future, but certainly India has assumed a dominant role, a leading role as far as our space headways are concerned. The other countries are picking up uh, cues and uh, space actually is no longer a taboo for India as it was for several years uh, after independence. And therefore, even if that be the prospect which you are mentioning, I think India will be among the first to be initiating that too. Right, sir. Dr. Singh, you are also heading the Science and Technology Department and Earth Sciences. I want to, you know, put this bigger question to you that, uh, you know, there are umpteen number of organizations focusing on research in sciences. And we also, you know, on and off get to see reports in the media that something really innovative has been invented or discovered in some institute. But they never see the light of the day. They are never commercialized. Those technologies are never commercialized and brought to market. Why is that? No, I think of late... A very conscious effort is being made in that direction to bring in a synergy between research academy and industry. And uh, the Atal mission, innovation mission, which was initiated by Prime Minister in 2016, which was launched by him, is actually meant to act as an interface between research and the commercial applications so that the research could benefit new avenues of livelihood, entrepreneurship and startups. Dr. Jitan Singh, uh, you are also heading uh, the pensions and uh, you know public uh, grievance department. Off late, you know, we have seen some of the states in our country wanting to switch back to the old pension system instead of the NPS, the new pension. What do you think? How sustainable would that be in the long run? No, actually, the new pension system was switched over primarily for reasons of sustainability. Well, mm-hmm. it was uh, considered that the old pension system may not be sustainable enough. So I think there is a merit in having shifted over to the new pension system as well. But yes, as and when required, keeping also all the inputs in mind, including those of the stakeholders or the potential pensioners, a call is taken from time to time accordingly. Dr. Jitendra Singh, thank you so thank much you, for you. joining us for this discussion. You were listening to Year in the Series exclusive interview with Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh on India's space journey and achievements. Interviewer was S. Rangavasham, AIR correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.